this particular discussion, we will talk about the fourth problem of uh, RMO 2017. Uh, the problem says that we have n square unit squares in the x y plane centered at the point i comma j. So, let us draw the let us quickly draw the x y plane. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. So, x axis and we have similarly the y axis. And we have n square n square unit squares. So, unit squares are basically squares of side length 1. So, we have n square unit squares centered at the point i comma j. So, for example, if i comma j is equals to 1 comma 1, then we will first mark the point 1 comma 1 and then we will draw a square around that point. So, we will draw a square around that point. And we have n square such unit squares. So, i ranges from 1 to n, j ranges from 1 to n and we have n square such points, hence n square such unit squares. Now, like any combinatorics problem or any mathematics problem in particular, the things become extremely clear when you take a particular case. So, let us first, let us see what is happening. using a special case. It is a very useful problem solving strategy. Whenever you are lost into the statement of the problem, try to see with a special case what is happening. We will try with the case n equals to 4. So, we have 1 less than equals to i less than equals to 4 and 1 less than equals to j less than equals to 4 and we have n square or 4 square unit squares. So, 16 of them, 16 of them centered at these points. So, you can write down these points i comma j, you can write them down as 1 comma 1, 1 comma 2, 1 comma 3, 1 comma 4, 2 comma 1, 2 comma 2, 2 comma 3, 2 comma 4 and same with 3 and finally the same with 4, 4 comma 1, 4 comma 2, 4 comma 3, 4 comma 4. So, we can mark these points on the x y plane. So, they will be, I will just mark the points instead of marking the boxes. You will soon see that it is quite useless to actually draw the boxes. It is sufficient to work with the points. So, what, what exactly are we doing with the 16 boxes or think of these 16 points as representative of the 16 boxes. So, whatever is the color of the point is the color of the box surrounding it. So, right now all of them are red. Now, what is it that the problem wants us to do? It says that whenever you pick two numbers i j and you pick another two numbers k l and i is less than j, k is less than l. So, you choose these four numbers and then you work with the three squares centered at i comma k, j comma k and j comma l. Now, let us work with a very specific example. Let us say i is equals to 1 and we want j greater than i. So, j is, is equal to 3 suppose. Suppose k is equals to it can be equal to i, but let us take it as 2 and l is equals to 4. 
L could be equal to J as well. There is no relationship between I and L, J and K and so on. Now what, what are we interested in? We are interested in these points I comma K, J comma K and J comma L. So we are interested in, in this particular case, we are interested in 1 comma 2 that is I comma K. J comma K is 3 comma 2 and J comma L is 3 comma 4. So we are interested in these three points. We are interested in coloring these three points or the squares containing these three points. We want to color those. Uh, so we are representing the squares as the points themselves. So we'll just color the points. So 1 comma 2 is clearly this point. Let's color it in green. And then 3 comma 2, let's color it in blue. And then 3 comma 4, let's color it in, um, let's take orange maybe, yeah. So we have these three points colored and we want them to have distinct colors. We want them to have distinct colors. Now first realize that what the problem says is whenever you choose three points like this, whenever you choose three points like this, you want to have them distinct colors. That's how you should be coloring all those 16 points or the 16 boxes. Of course, if we were allowed to use 16 different colors, there wouldn't be any problem. We would use different colors for each of the boxes and whatever three boxes we choose, they will have different colors. But we want to do this using least possible number of colors. We don't want to use many colors. We want to accomplish this using least possible number of colors. Okay. So how do we do that? Now first realize that the first number of the coordinate here signifies the column. So if I see 1 here, I know I am in the first column, first column. And if I see 3 here, I will know that I am in the third column. And also see that the second number signifies the row. So if I look at 2, I know I am in the second row. And if I see second number as 4, I am in the fourth row. And see, the second row is repeated here. And the third column is also repeated. The third column is also repeated. And this is not an accident. Why? Because let's look at this in a more abstract setting. So we are dealing with I comma K, J comma K and J comma L. Now look at I comma K and J comma K. They have their second coordinate same which means they are in the same row because remember the second one signifies which row they are in whereas the j comma k and j comma l signifies same column because they have they both have the first coordinate same so, in the abstract setting, let's draw the xy coordinate system. So, this is x, this is y. We have chosen i less than j, k less than l. And now we want to mark these three points i comma k, j comma k, j comma l. So, we know that we have to first look at two columns i and j. 
because those are the two columns that we will at all use. The first number in the duplet signifies which column we are in. So we have ith column and we have jth column. i is less than j, that's because that is why i comes before j. And so we go up to the kth row and we mark these two points, kth row. Now what happens? Next we want to mark j comma l. So we are in the jth column and we want to go up to the lth row. So we are here. Remember k is less than l. That's why lth row is above kth row. Okay, now we have a very clear picture of what's happening. Whenever we choose three points like this, which are sort of in a reverse L, so it looks like if you join them with an imaginary line, it looks like a reverse L, right? So it looks, it, it, it looks like this, yeah. Okay, so whenever we have, whenever we choose three points from in this pattern, whenever we choose three points in a reverse L, we want them to have different colors. That's all we want. In fact, you can test it with n equals to 5. If, you, if, if what we are saying is correct, so if n is equal to 5, let's mark the 25 points quickly. And you will see that once you start drawing the points, it's not very difficult to experiment. It doesn't take a lot of time. And uh, most people won't take the risk, the intellectual risk of actually doing the experiment they think that they can come up to a proof without having their hands dirty. Anyway, so we have 25 points here. Now, suppose we want to make this reverse L. We want to make this reverse L. So we can choose any row and we can choose any column and we can choose something like this. Or we could have chosen, let me do it here, we could have chosen something like that, okay? And whenever you choose an L, your I, J, K, or whenever you choose this reverse pattern, reverse L pattern, you can always find your I, J, K, L. So for example, in this, in the green case, in the green case, the I, I is 1 j is 3, so i is equal to 1, j is equal to 3, k is equal to 1, and small l is equal to 5. So see, k is less than l, i is less than j, and we have marked the points 1 comma 1, which is i comma k, 3 comma 1, which is j comma k, and uh, j comma l which is 3 comma 5 j comma l so what we want to do is whenever we have an l whenever we have an l like this suppose whatever three points we choose from this l we want to have them different colors question is what is the least number of colors that we need to use to accomplish this? What is the least number of colors that we need to use to accomplish this? In other words, what is the largest possible reverse L? What is the largest possible reverse L? that we can draw. And the answer is very simple. It is 
clearly this one right it is clearly this is the largest possible reverse l that we can draw and how many points does it have well it any any if you take just the column if you just look at the column we know there are n square points so there will be n points in the column and this portion of the row we are leaving out one point so this will have n minus one more points so in total we will need n plus n minus one points which is 2n minus 1. So, the largest possible reverse L will have 2n minus 1 points and we want all of them to have different colors. So, that is the least number of colors that we will need to accomplish this. That is the end of the problem. So, the takeaway from this entire discussion should be this in any significantly complicated uh, problem, you should start trying special cases to see what is happening. Thank you for watching and we will come back with another video shortly.